billions are about to die. The question is, are you ready? Um, it's a very important time period that we're going into. The Bible calls it the end time, the beginning of sorrows, the last days. There's a bunch of different titles for this, but the Bible prophesied a lot of things would happen in these end times, and it's going to be a very bad time. And uh, you can say, oh, it's just conspiracy theory is, uh, you know, whatever, pessimistic you know, thing. If you actually look at the facts and look at the, you know, the details of what's coming out, heading into war and um, shortages of food, shortages of fuel, um, all kinds of bad things are coming and it could end very bad for a lot of people. And I don't believe it's going to be a few million people die. I think it's going to be billions with a B. I really do. Um, how do you prepare for it? Back in the Old Testament, there's a book called Joel. The book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 9. And we are Bible-believing Christians here. Uh, I don't give you my feelings or opinions, and that's all that you get. No, I have a book, this King James Bible, and this is what I preach out of. This is God's perfect word for the English-speaking people. And it prophesies some very interesting things that none of the new, new versions or a lot of the other, you know, different writings out there of different religions, they can't prophesy the future like this book can. Joel chapter 3 verse 9, Pro Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let the, all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Uh, the United Nations has there on the front, the quote of verse from Isaiah talks about beating your, um, it's the opposite of this, your swords into plowshares and your spears into pruning hooks. Well, this is saying, no, actually, before that comes, there's a lot of war. Uh, see, there will be a thousand-year kingdom on this earth where Jesus Christ will rule it, and it will be a time of great peace. Okay? But before that comes, there's going to be a lot of war. And Jesus warned about that. Uh, he said that there would be wars and rumors of wars. Um, verse 11, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither calls thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe, Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. God sees the wickedness of the heathen. And heathen in context is just talking about lost people. It doesn't mean people that identify with some heathen belief system, paganism, and whatever else. It's just saying lost people, people that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Now, this is future prophetic stuff that isn't here yet. But the whole point is, we can see a lot of this stuff coming. And what's going to happen? There will be multitudes in the Valley of Decision. There will be multitudes of people that are going to be slaughtered in the future. War is coming. War is unavoidable at this point in time. You know, there's an old saying about when men put down their, or when men stop talking, they pick up their swords. Yeah, and you can say, well, that's what men are for you. Men as in mankind. There's a lot of women out there that are you know, equally as violent and even more so than a lot of men out there. So, you know, the feministic stuff of, well, it's men, the white men is, you know, they're the war creating, you know, guys and they're, they like to kill and whatever. Uh, there's a lot of people like to kill. Don't just blame it on white, you know, capitalism or something like that. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Well, I just refuse to hear this. I, I'm not even going to listen to this, this guy. He's just really got an attitude. And he's this and he's, okay, all right. Just remember my words because they will come to pass. I will promise you that war is coming. A lot of people are going to die. Billions are going to die. I can promise you that. Um, I will never have to worry about somebody coming up to me 50 years from now and saying, what happened to your war there, preacher boy? Um... No. Uh, war is coming. It's coming soon. Um, again, if you don't understand the whole point of war, the military-industrial complex, they make money off of it. 
Okay, there's a lot of people, Lockheed Martin and the different, you know, ammunition manufacturers and different big companies and contractors and whatever else in the U.S. military itself. And it's all a big, huge money-making racket. And at the top, the Vatican controls all the different countries and they tell them who's going to war with who. There's no good guys or bad guys in war. All right. There's geopolitical restructuring. All right. I mean, let's just face it, you know. You're, you're an American military guy or whatever else. I mean, right now they had the Memorial Day was a couple days ago, and we had the, the POW MIA flag right out here on this telephone pole right in front of our office, right out there. What's that about? Why did they leave over 2,000 soldiers behind in Vietnam? And the Vietnamese government said, hey, we'll give them back, but you have to pay reparations. The American government said, keep them. We will never forget most people don't even understand what happened. Talk about not forgetting. They don't even remember what it was about. It was a political maneuver. That's what it was. It was the CIA's drug war in Southeast Asia. That's all that Vietnam was. You get guys that went to Vietnam, were you allowed to win wars? No. Take that hill. Okay, we're pulling out. Viet Cong moves back in. Time to take the hill again. Huh? Desert Storm? Operation Iraqi Freedom, Afghanistan. Oh, what did they do in Afghanistan? They moved in all these troops and everything else and then just, hey, let's pull out the, the American troops and everything and just leave millions of dollars of, of military hardware there for the Taliban. Why? It's political, political structuring. That's all it is. Well, no, well, we're there, the good guys fighting the bad guys. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Oh, we can avoid war. We can avoid... No, you can't. No, you can't. The Bible said that war is coming in the future. God wrote that. You want to reject that, then you reject God. See what he does to you. But you're going to be one of the multitudes that's in the valley of decision. You better make up your mind. Billions are going to die. What are you going to do to prepare for it? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1-2 through two. We then as workers together with him, I work together with the Lord, Beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. You know what you have right now, you people that are watching me, if you're lost? You know what you have in your life? You have the grace of God. You realize how much God has let you get away with? God gives man free will. Oh, if there's a truly loving God, why would he allow all this evil in the world? Because it's called free will. God gives man free will. If you don't understand that, well, it's because you've got some problems up here few screws are a little bit loose. Tighten them, please. You know, um, God gives man free will. And if you're a, I just want to say this because occasionally these idiots pop into my comment section. If you're a Calvinist, please get saved. Okay. Calvin had rocks for brains that God creates everything and, and just everything out there is all part of God's plan. And some child gets molested. God is the one that was behind it. it, it stupid. Okay. There's so many scriptures God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The times of this, this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. There's many times God just said, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, you do what you want down there. That's the grace of God. God has grace for people. He'll let you mess around in sin for a long time, and he'll earnestly plead with you, please get saved, please get saved. Hey, there's a, a lot of war and death coming. Do you want to come and be saved? I can protect you. I'll get you through it. People slap his hand away. They take this book and they throw it on the ground. I don't want anything to do with that. <sighs> then you're receiving God's grace in vain. You know how many people are going to die that lived a good life in the future? Oh, he just loved life. And oh, he was such a good person. Everybody was, he was everybody's friend. Oh, it was just so wonderful. Did, did he want anything to do with Jesus Christ? Well, no, he made fun of the Bible and he made fun of Jesus. But, you know, he was such a good guy. And he got killed in that bombing and that war. And he got shot in the head or whatever else. And it was just terrible. He received the grace of God in vain. All the years that people have spent just rejecting the Lord. They're receiving the grace of God in vain. Verse 2, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. God's waiting. He's listening. 
The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You believe the gospel, you pray, you say, God, please save me. He's listening. I have heard thee in a time accepted. Okay, what does that mean? Heard thee in a time accepted. Don't wait too long. The Holy Spirit will plead with you for a while, but if you harden your heart, the Lord says, okay, pff, not, not going to waste any time with you. You'll be one of the multitudes in the valley of decision, and I'm the one that makes the decision, and you're dead meat. You're going to die, because I don't care about you, because you didn't care about me. Are you going to accept him? Are you going to call upon him? Well, I'm just not ready right now. I just, you know, want to mess around with my sin a little bit more. I don't know. And in the day of salvation have I succured thee. Succured is a Bible word for helped. I will help you. You need to be saved? Do you want to be saved? God will help you. Well, you know, I can I think I can do this on my own. Okay. Behold, whenever you feel like it is the, is the accepted time, whenever you feel like it is the day, uh, no. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He lost people. Look right here at my fingers. Because if you don't have a Bible, you need to get a Bible. You see where I'm pointing right there, the yellow verse? See the little red outline around the word now? You see that? Are you... you Reading that for yourself? Do you accept or reject? Well, I'm just, okay, then you reject. Well, just give me some time to think about it. You don't have time. You're running out of time. Do you understand that? Now is the accepted time. You don't have much longer. Well, I think, you know, if we get together, I think we could probably put an end to the New World Order. We're going to fight the New World Order. You're not doing anything of the kind, princess. You're not fighting this new world order. You are not fighting what the Bible says is coming. It's not happening. You know why? Well, it's because you're just giving in to the pre-trib rapture. You think that you'll be out of here before bad times come. I'm going to face the Antichrist face to face and I'll fight him because I'm a patriot. What's coming is God's punishment on the lost. And you're going to fight that? Little fairy princess? I don't think so. You're not going to fight it. Well, I'm I'm a CIA. Uh, I'm an ex Navy SEAL. I'm a this and I'm a. You're not fighting God, stupid. It's not happening. You better figure out what the Bible says about salvation. Why? Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. You see somebody and they're walking out blind, some blind guy and he's walking across the road and an 18 wheeler's coming. Well, you know, I'm just going to wait a little bit of time, see how this works out. Move! Get out of the way! You yell at them, you warn them, that's what I'm doing to you. Will you accept it? Will you understand and say, I need to look into what salvation is? Maybe I should just call off work and just say, you know, I won't be in today. I need to, I'm not feeling all that well. I can see what's coming. I need something more protection than a ballistic vest or a nice handgun or, or something like that. Or some underground place or some bug out location or bug out bag or whatever. I know that war is coming. I know that bad times are coming. I need help. I need protection. This Bible says now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. God says, I have heard thee in a time accepted. Now is the accepted time. Hmm. Yeah. God's waiting. He's listening. Romans 14. Romans chapter 14 and verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. That's a prayer that a Christian can pray. Whether I live or whether I die, I belong to Jesus Christ. 
Now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. We have hymns, thousands of them about Jesus Christ. People from all walks of life. Fanny Crosby, born blind, wrote hundreds of hymns. Horatio Spafford, I think the guy's name was, lost his children, all of his children. Boat going across to, to Europe back in the 1800s sank. First he lost his little boy and then his, his daughters. He, he lost his little boy to sickness and then his daughters were going over with his wife and the whole boat sank and only his wife lived. It is well with my soul. Story after story after story of people that said, now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. And you know what? No matter what I go through, whether I live or whether I die, I am the Lord's. Can you say that? Billions are going to die. It's coming. It's coming rapidly. Are you ready? Finally, Philippians chapter 4. There is no promise of anything. And if you have any brains, you know that. There is no amount of prepping that you can do or safe places that you can go to or whatever else that you're guaranteed that you'll be safe from what's coming. I mean, there are so many different things that could happen, different scenarios and whatever else. Nobody is guaranteed anything in terms of living, continuing to live on this earth. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. This is for Christians. Okay, If you're lost and you reject Jesus Christ, this isn't for you. Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Thank God. Spend some time thanking Him when you pray. Don't just, oh, God, I need this, and I God, you need that, you know, and, and uh, you know, here, boy. <laughs> Come here, boy. I need you. Um, uh, yeah, God, um, I want you to do this, and I want you to go get me this, and I want you to go get me. Uh-uh. Spend some time thanking Him. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You better get ready. Times are about to get very rough. And you can have the peace of God. It will keep your mind there. Your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. There are a lot of things that are very negative, but they're true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. You know, when this country falls and when other countries fall out there and bad times come on the lost heathen people out there, those heathen come into the valley of decision like the Bible talks about in the book of Joel. It's going to be just. Don't get in God's way. As I preached about a few weeks ago there about the, you know, God's blessing and judgment. Oh, a whole bunch of people died over there. Well, they were all wicked. Well, that was just. They deserved it. Whatsoever things are pure, is God's judgment pure? The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Pure. Whatsoever things are pure. I have a more sure word of prophecy. Hmm. Whatsoever, th whatsoever things are lovely. Well, it's good to go out and smell the roses, as they say, and go look at what God created out of nature. But you know what? This book is lovely. This book is beautiful. Whatsoever things are of good report. Hey, praise Lord, he judged so-and-so. Hey, praise Lord, is this and that. Hey, thank the Lord, we just got this. It's good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Um, you will fall apart mentally if all you ever do is just think about the negative. You have to think about the positive sometimes. As it's been well said, a Christian is like a battery. You have to have equal parts of negative and positive for the battery to work. Yeah. Think about things that are true. 
Think about things that are just, but you also have to think about things that are pure and lovely. Balance. Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. Moderation, don't do too much of one or too little of another or whatever. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, if you're still watching this and you're not saved, or you skipped ahead to this point in time, um, the God of peace can be with you. And he can give you that assurance of salvation. He can give you that, that truth that you can say, you know what? The troops are coming down the street. There's no way I can't get away from them. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm old. I'm disabled. I'm whatever the issue. I have health issues. I'm going to die. There was a bomb that hit this area and it knocked me over and I'm laying there under some rubble and I'm laying there and I'm thinking I can see the blood, you know, I can feel the blood running down my face and I'm looking down and my hand is all mangled and just a smashed up little thing there and there's blood everywhere and I'm going to die. Whether we wake or whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. God, I'm coming home. Can't wait to see you, Lord. What else offers that? Oh, well, I guess I'm dying now and I'll be a statistic. Well, that's great. This will Hopefully my death in this building here will go to help prove atheism, atheistic evolution to more people. Yes, hopefully my body can be recovered for the sake of science. And, and <laughs> blessed assurance. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, it's going to get real. And you're going to see a lot of false Christians, uh, they'll be coming out of the woodwork. They won't make it. And you're going to see a lot of atheists all of a sudden get real religious and uh, start thinking about God and want to talk about God when it gets real bad. So, what more can I say? I'm going to put some salvation messages at the end of this video. If you want to know how to be saved, genuinely saved, uh, not going to church, not giving 10% of your tithe, Sunday best, all that stuff, that's just nonsense. It's unscriptural. Um, what I'm offering you is a belief in a book, a book that said that things were going to happen and they're coming to pass just like this book said, um, and a personal relationship with the author of this book. You say, well, King James. No, King James didn't write this book. Okay, well, the 54 translators. No, they didn't write the book either. Uh, the Holy Spirit inspired this book. Um, you say, I don't believe it. Well, then watch some other buddy or some, somebody else's channel. <laughs> say it that way. Uh, it'll get real. The people that are supposed to make it through will make it through in the Valley of Decision. The people that are the heathen that are supposed to perish, they will perish. And it's going to be a very bad time for them. They will have no peace. And when they die, they will go straight to hell. Why? Well, because the Bible said so. That's why. So please do watch some of the videos at the end of this and um, make sure that you are saved. Uh, you're running out of time. Thank you for watching.